Welcome to this session of Product Design and Value Engineering. In today's session, we will discuss about concept development. What is concept development? What is the process of concept development? Why it is important? And how we can uh, achieve a good concept development process? And how to scrutinize a good concept from the available different concepts that we have developed over the time? So all this will be discussed in this session in an overview manner. First of all, let us discuss why it is important. So concept development is most crucial phase of product development. Why? Because most of the things are decided during the concept development process. Once the concept is finalized, then there will be many limitations on the minimum cost because if you are uh, taking a choosing a concept which requires a high technology then it will require a certain amount of cost then the functionality will be finalized as well if your concept is finalized the functionality of the products will be finalized then the function secondary functions secondary functions are the functions which are more or add on to the functions which the customer actually desires or wants. So the primary functions will be the necessary functions. For example, if you are using a mobile phone, then the calling and SMS will be the final primary functions because that is the function of mobile phone. But the extra features like camera, GPS, uh, the features which are incorporated, incorporated with IoTs, all those will be secondary functions. So, these secondary functions will also be finalized in the concept development process itself. And what is concept development process? So, we can uh, summarize concept development process as the front end process, which is a generic concept development process, which starts with identifying the customer needs, then once the customer's needs are identified, we establish some target specification. Target specifications will be derived from customer needs. So if customer says, I want a good uh, performing car or a high speed car. So we'll uh, establish a target that we want to achieve a speed of 160 or 180 kilometers. Then we will develop some concepts. Then we will select the concepts from those uh, developed concepts. Then we will test it, the concept, we will finalize the concept and we will benchmark it. That means we will compare our concept with the available solution in the market and we will do an economical analysis of which uh, concept or which product is better. And after some modification and we will go in prototyping phase. So this is the entire process of concept development. After the concept has been developed and finalized, then we can go in the uh, design or detailed design phase itself. And after that, we will go through customer testing and all that. But before that, this is what a process of concept development will look like. Once the entire concept development is complete, uh, then we can go for the next phases of product development cycles which we have already, already discussed in our previous lecture. Now let us discuss how to identify the customer needs. So to identify customer needs there are we have to first address different customers because each and every customer will have different needs. So remember that all customer will not have same need so we also will not be able to satisfy need of all the customers or we can say that we will also not be able to satisfy all the needs of single customer because a single customer may have multiple needs which cannot be incorporated in a single product so we need to identify which needs we are addressing and which needs we are trying to satisfy. So that is called uh, prioritizing of needs. We are prioritizing that, okay, these are the needs that we need to satisfy. This should be there in our product. And these are the needs which we can consider that are 
that can be introduced as secondary function or extra features, extra features. Or there will be some needs that we will ignore because uh, it will not be in the scope of our product or it will be very high cost queue or it will be a very specific or niche needs which we do not want to address. That depends on your product. But there will be different kinds of needs. Then all these needs are grouped together and we review those needs and then once we have uh, identified different customers needs we will establish target specification now what is the difference between this specification and the needs because uh, at, uh, in a broader sense specifications are the numbers that we want to introduce on in our products for example if you are talking about your mobile phone then 8 GB RAM is a specification this amount of processor 1.5 GB octa core processor or a, uh, 128 GB of uh, memory all these are specifications so what makes different uh, from uh, uh, this specification and the needs what is the difference between those two so if we talk about the needs then the needs are in subjective terms what do we mean by subjective terms that there will not be any numbers associated with them but it will be in qualitative form for example customer says that i want a product which should be low weight which should be low cost which should have high efficiency but when we quantify those needs those are called specifications in specification we are talking about specific numbers that needs to be there in our product for example if we say that the low weight, how much? 4 kg weight should be there, not more than that. So, this is a specification. The need is low weight, but the specification is a specific number putting a limit to what you want to achieve. Similarly, if customer talk about low cost, then we can uh, um, uh, set it as a specification of price should be less than 100 rupees so that puts a numerical or quantitative limit to our design or to our concepts so all these are uh, target specification and uh, there are many methods of establishing this but uh, this is how we can generally uh, establish them then after the target specifications are there we can go for concept generation why first we need target specification because before going to any concept generation before going to any uh, design you should know what you want to achieve and those target specification will give the exact idea of what you want to achieve after target specification you can go for concept generation and during this concept uh, generation you can do research and development and you can develop um, uh, a certain number of concepts, many number of concepts which can meet those specifications. But all those concepts will not be good. During concept generation process, we develop many number of concepts. We develop 10, 15 or maybe more than those concepts. But all these concepts will not be very good. But during the concept generation process, we do not criticize the concepts. We focus on achieving as many concepts as possible similar thing what we do in the uh, brainstorming process we want to generate idea there so we encourage each and every idea similarly during concept generation we encourage each and every concept so for example if you want to uh, generate a concept of uh, say clothing theme so these are some examples of different concepts which can be there for the same product which will achieve the same functions and there are many concepts here there are total more of five concepts that we can see here and all these are uh, have same functionality all these will do your tasks properly but which should you select that depends on the 
your criteria of the product you want to develop. If you want to develop a high cost, high quality product, then you select similar concept. If you want to develop a low cost, low uh, minimal product, then you can develop those uh, concepts. But uh, having multiple concepts is very important. After concept is generated, after you have multiple concepts, you select few of them. You select one or two of them. So, first we select three or four most promising concepts, then we reduce them. Uh, we consider them for, uh, we reduce them into one or two concepts. Now, how to select these concepts? So based on post, based on technology data required, do we have the technology to manufacture the concept or not? Uh, if we have machines that needs to be there to manufacture the product, uh, can we purchase those machines? All these needs to be considered. Uh, we also consider USP of our organization. For example, if uh, Apple is producing some product, then their USP is quality. So, they will select the concept which will have highest quality and highest functionality. But similarly, if instead of Apple, uh, say Redmi or Realme is producing a uh, similar product, they will select a concept which will have low cost and minimal requirements. Why? Because their USP is low cost products. So, that depends on what your organization do, what is your organizational policies, how much amount of profit will you generate from a specific concept. If you have five different options and according to you, the one concept will give you 10 times more profit than the other concept, then obviously you will select the one which gives you more profit. So, all these are criteria of concept selections. And you can ultimately develop one or more concept using the selected concept. But normally people develop just one concept because developing a concept is a costly affair. So it will require so much amount of money and time investment to develop the concept. So basically you go with one or maximum two concepts for similar product. After that you do concept testing. Now how we can do this concept testing. So the selected concepts are just layout. They are not even the uh, what we can say the overview design. But uh, we then have to uh, make them feasible. Make uh, we have to think about how to make product out of those concepts. Then we think about post. We think about how to manufacture. We think about the functions. And all this will be considered. Then different assemblies, sub-assemblies that will be required in the product. All this will be considered during the concept testing. And how to test those concepts? So there are some methods of concept testing. First is a scale drawing or drawing sheet. We can simply draw the concept on a sheet. Or we can use computer softwares. Or we can uh, use solid models. So all these are the methods of concept testing which do not involve any physical model and thus they are low cost, they require less time and normally they are preferred in the concept testing phase. But there are some other methods also which involves physical testing. Uh, for example, we can build a scale down model if you are uh, building a, if you are thinking about uh, uh, manufacturing a rocket, then you will not directly build a full scale rocket, but you will first think about making a scale down prototype and see that if there are any flaws or not. And after that, you go for full scale prototype. But these are physical models and they require more time, they are expensive. Uh, they are expensive to check or test if the product performs design function or not. And hence they are less preferred. They are reserved for the final test only. And there are some examples of concept testing as we have seen the drawing sheets 
our uh, shown here drones are very easy to build very quick and very easy to change over and the testing of them is very less costly other than that we can choose for a low fidelity prototype this is called low fidelity prototype uh, this sh uh, shows the product with its all the features that are available but it is not fully functional uh, this uh, bag prototype of bag shown here is made of uh, paper only with paper and some sticky uh, some cello tape or some kind of uh, tape so this is very easy to build and also it gives a solid idea of how the product will look and how the product will work but it is not the product in its full functionality so these are called low fidelity prototype and then there can be concepts of a physical prototype actual physical code prototype which will be more costly so these are different methods of concept testing now after concept testing we also have to finalize a concept and we have to select some specifications so how can we do that so after the concept testing as we have tested our concepts we know that which concepts performs better so we can choose a best performing features now understand that each concept will perform differently so each and every concept will have its plus and minus they have their advantages and disadvantages so final specification product specification can be established by selected concept because each concept will have different functionality and each concept will have different specifications actual specification first we have developed target specification which we wanted to achieve but after the concept testing and after this all the process that we have followed through those specifications might change and mostly they will change so after concept is selected we decide the final specification and after the final specification are decided we go for benchmarking process now what is this benchmarking process benchmarking process is the process of comparing your product with the available solution in the market or with your competitors to make sure that your product is at least competitive if not better than all other different products so this is the called process of benchmarking in which you compare your product with other products now why this benchmarking is important because we want to make sure that our product will be selling in the market and people will be willing to buy the product so for that you consider your usp you consider usp of product your product why your product will be uh, preferred by the customers it might have it should have at least two or three usps it should minimum have one single usp either your product should have the best quality in the market or it should have the lowest price in the market or it should have a combination of that which is not already available or offered in the market so this is those are the usp of your product and as we have discussed it can be post it can be a added functions some extra features it can be some unique looks some unique aesthetics uh, many people buy the products on uh, base of aesthetic as well and there can be many here is an example of a benchmarking of two different products those two are very different products those two have different uh, customer propositions but one is high cost high quality solution the other one is a low cost a small scale solution those two are different kind of product but we are just comparing those two of what is the advantage of, of them and what are the disadvantages of them
and after the benchmarking process what we will do we will do economic analysis we will do our cost calculations again why again we are doing this cost calculations because the first time that we have done our cost calculations after this after those calculations many things would have changed so we make sure that our cost calculations are correct and there are not any mistake then we also modify the we have also modified our design for that we need to redo these calculations also now we think about is the customer will pay those amount if we have calculated uh, done our economic analysis and we find that the customer need to pay at least uh, 50000 rupees for our product and there are uh, already available solutions which offer the product for with 10000 rupees so we need to rethink our strategies because ultimately it should be in the range of uh, the uh, price rent which customer is willing to pay after that we do modeling and prototyping and modeling and prototyping we have already seen that uh, we have made a prototype earlier but this need to be done if the prototype that we have made is not a physical prototype it is if our prototype was only a uh, low cost solution or a drawing or a model only then we need to model and prototype to make sure that how the product actually looks and how it actually feels it needs to be done if we have not made our product type in concept testing phase if we have done that then it is uh, not necessary we can avoid it in later stages so this will be all for concept uh, development process i hope you have gained some insights about the process of concept development during this session thank you